All right. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about the remaining topic in Chapter 17, Stability of Equilibrium. So we hitherto studied uh, existence and uniqueness of equilibrium. So, um, you know, Wallachian equilibrium exists just under the two conditions and preference relations, uh, straight convexity and strong monotonicity. And then we don't need any other conditions for uh, existence, existence of equilibrium. And for uniqueness, however, uh, we studied two conditions, right? So under either weak axiom of revealed preference or the gross substitute property, uh, we studied that uh, that Wallachian equilibrium is unique, so there is a no other equilibrium. Okay? And then we also studied several characteristics of equilibrium. So under the two conditions on preference relation, uh, we studied, <clears throat> so we saw that excess demand function possesses several properties, and those properties will translate into Wallachian equilibrium because uh, Wallachian equilibrium in the end is characterized by excess demand function. Okay, so we studied these topics so far in chapter 17. But one thing we missed, and one thing we never talked about is how the economic system can reach the equilibrium status. So suppose that we have a one market system. So here this figure uh, describes a one specific market, and then we have a demand function and supply function. And we started under which condition demand and supply has a unique intersection, uh, I mean the conditions for uniqueness, okay? So suppose that given market, uh, the given market system has a uh, unique equilibrium, okay? But if we think about initial price, initial market price, that will not be an equilibrium with a very high chance. So if the initial market price is not at the equilibrium, then how does the given system lead us to equilibrium, okay? So how does the initial price reach that equilibrium market price? Okay. So in this video, we're going to talk about some dynamic system of a price. So we're going to talk about the movement of a price over time and whether that economic system can reach the status of equilibrium or not. Okay. So we're going to talk about some trajectory of a price over time or evolution process of prices over time. But this is a very difficult topic because uh, whenever we talk about dynamic system, we have to adopt uh, some system of differential equations. Uh, but just putting aside this mathematical model, uh, just putting aside this mathematical model aside uh, for a second, you know, uh, as a matter of fact, in economics, there is an intuitive dynamic process. So if you, when you study the principle or intermediate microeconomics, I think you ever seen this kind of figure many times. Uh, so if you take a look at some specific market, there is a demand and supply, and there, is, there exists a unique equilibrium. And suppose that we start at some non-equilibrium price, say P0. So at this price, there will be excess supply because uh, quantity supplied is larger than quantity demanded. Okay. So we can anticipate that uh, this, this price cannot persist forever because there will be some market forces, you know, that pulling down this, uh, that pull down this uh, market price to equilibrium. So the basic logic is like this. Uh, so at this price, you know, there is a excess supply. So that means some of the units produced are not sold out. So this amount of units are not sold out. So as a result, you know, some firms uh, will exit the market and the existing firms now reduce the uh, quantity produced. And in order, to sell, in order to sell these units, now the firms realize that uh, they have to lower the price. So the market price will go down, okay? So it will head toward the equilibrium price, you know, like this. So if we draw the one trajectory of price over time, you know, we can see that our market price will converge to equilibrium price over time. By the same token, if we start as some price below the equilibrium, now we have an excess demand. So now some firms will enter the market and the existing firms now expand the production. 
So quantity supplied and the market price will increase at the same time, right? So now we have a, this kind of a trajectory uh, of price, okay? So that is quite intuitive. And in fact, based on this intuitive dynamic process, Leon Wallace suggested that uh, initial market price always converges to equilibrium price, okay? But the one difficulty here is uh, it is not that easy to translate this intuitive process into precise dynamic laws, uh, because the main reason is the main difficulty comes from the fact that, you know, whenever we describe a, some dynamic system, we have to adopt a differential equations, as I told you. But if you study the differential equations, uh, you may know that many differential equations are not solvable by hands. Okay, so it is very difficult to obtain such a trajectory. Uh, it's very difficult to solve out differentiation. So very hard to obtain such a uh, trajectory. Okay, so it's not easy to see that. You know how does the economic system reaches uh, the equilibrium status? Okay, so in this video we are going to study early contribution by Paul Samuelson in 1950s. Uh, so the Paul Samuelson assumed that uh, the movement of price follows this differentiation. So now we regard price of a good k, p sub k, as a function of a time t. Okay. So the derivative of the derivative of the, uh, the derivative of price with respect to t is equal to some constant c sub k times the excess demand for good k. Okay, so this differential, the basic idea of this differential equation comes from the previous figure. Okay, you will see why in a second. Uh, so whenever we have a excess demand, where is my pen? Um, all right. So whenever we have an excess demand at the current price, so z sub k is a positive. Then we have a two positive numbers right here. So the sign of the derivative will be positive, meaning that uh, price will move upward. Mm. But when z sub k is a negative, now we have a negative number. So the sign of the derivative will be negative, meaning that p sub k is now moving downward. Okay. So in words, whenever there is an excess demand, price goes upward. Whenever there is excess supply, price goes downward. Okay. And the rule of this C sub K constant, so it controls the speed of price adjustment. So when, as C sub K gets larger and larger, you can see that uh, the speed converging to you know, equilibrium price, I mean, the speed of this uh, movement of price uh, is very high, okay? When C sub K is low, and you know, the, ch uh, the price will change over time uh, with a you know, very uh, low speed. Okay, at a low speed. Okay. <clears throat> so this equation tells us if there is a neither excess demand nor supply, so z sub k is equal to zero, then you know price will not change over time. So that is a stationary point of this differential equation system. So if we denote by p star uh, the stationary point of this differ uh, this differential equation. That is given by uh, this characteristic equation. So z sub k of p star is equal to zero for every market k. So for every k. Okay. <clears throat> so now the question is, if the price adjustment is given by this differential equation, then we can find, we may be able to find a solution to this differentiation. Uh, and let me denote that by P of K. So P sub K of T. So that is a, a transactor of a price in market K over time. So whether that converges to a uh, you know, stationary point or not. And because, you know, observe that this stationary point of this differentiation system is a Wallachian equilibrium because at Wallachian equilibrium, uh, there is a neither excess demand nor excess supply. So stationary point of this differentiation is consistent with the notion of equilibrium. 
All right? And once again, the basic idea of this differential equation comes from the previous, previous figure. And what Wallace suggested is, uh, the Wallace suggested that equilibrium can be achieved through a process of tautement. So here, tautement is a French word uh, meaning trial and error. So he proposed a one simultaneous auction so in which uh, agents are supposed to submit their demand schedules, x sub k of p. So this is not a number, but a function. So given arbitrary price, uh, how many units of good k each consumer or each agent is willing to purchase? So after submitting this demand schedule to auctioneer, and now auctioneer will compute the uh, excess demand function for good k. And then, you know, by trial and error, the auctioneer may first try some P. Then it realized that, so he may be realized that, he may be, he may be able to realize that there is an excess demand at the current price. Then he adjusts the price, so he increased the price. In case of excess supply, now he decreased the price. So by this process, throughout this process, uh, Wallace believed that, you know, no matter what the initial price is, the market system uh, leads us to equilibrium status, equilibrium price. Okay. But now we have a, some, <clears throat> excuse me, we have some specific differentiation, some price adjustment system. And then, uh, so now we want to say under which condition uh, this price system is globally stable, meaning that the solution to this differentiation P sub K of T has the following property. So the limit of P of T as T goes to infinity is equal to a uh, stationary point of this differentiation. Okay? So that is a Wallace equilibrium. So in other words, uh, the price adjustment, adjustment process results in Wallace equilibrium price or not. Okay? For all initial price factor P naught, so no matter where we start, you know, if the price changes over time following this differentiation, then you know the market price can reach the equilibrium price or not. Okay. So now we study some condition, uh, some specific condition under which, uh, you know, the market price can reach the equilibrium or not. Okay. So still we can describe how the economic system reached the state of equilibrium. So we can obtain uh, this kind of a trajectory because uh, although this equation looks simple, you know, it's really difficult to solve that. You know, excess demand function is usually non-linear. Even in case of cop Douglas in pure exchange model, Z sub K is a uh, alpha sub K uh, omega dot P over PK minus omega K, okay? That is a nonlinear equation with respect to P, okay? Such a nonlinear differential equation uh, is not usually solved by hands. So we can obtain such a trajectory, but still, nevertheless, we can tell if the price, uh, if the price adjustment follows this differential equation, uh, we can tell whether uh, you know, system is globally stable. So, regardless of initial price, uh, the market system can reach the equilibrium or not. Okay. So, for this purpose, we're going to use a, a Ryapunov theorem. Uh, that is a, a one convenient criterion uh, for determining when given system is globally stable or not, without solving the differentiation system. So Ryapunov theorem tells us if there exists a Ryapunov function for a given system, so suppose that the uh, movement of a price follows this differentiation. Okay, so one so derivative is given by some function of p. Okay, and the way to check whether solution to this differentiation is globally stable, meaning that the system is globally stable. Okay, so the trajectory of the, of the price solution to this differentiation system reaches, uh, reaches the equilibrium price in the end or not. Uh, so that depends on whether 
we can find the Ryapunov function associated with this differentiation system. Right then, what is a Ryapunov function? The definition is right here. So function v is called Ryapunov function if the satisfy if it satisfies the following two properties. So the first condition for Ryapunov function is uh, suppose that you know so this give, uh, given economic system so this dynamic system has a stationary point at p star. Then the associated Ryapunov function must must attain global minimum at that point. So one candidate of Ryapunov function, so if we put P on the horizontal axis, uh, looks like this. So it does not have to be monotone, but it has to hit global minimum at P star, at the stationary point. Okay, so V of P star should be equal to zero. And then at that point, the function v has a global minimum. In other words, uh, v of p, so for all other p, uh, function takes a, a positive value like this. Okay, but does not have to be monotone. Right? <clears throat> and then the second condition for Ryapunov function is uh, if we take a composition between v, this function v, and p of t. p of t is a solution to differentiation. So if we take a composition between v and uh, trajectory of price to make a composite function, now we, you know, this composite function is a function of t, and if we take the derivative with respect to t, it has a negative sign. All right, so now after composition, now the domain is a time t, all right? So v of t looks like this. Okay, so it's a decreasing function, monotone decreasing with respect to t. This is a v of p of t. All right? So although I'm not I'm not gonna prove this Ryapunov theorem, the basic idea is very simple. Uh, so as time goes, you know, v function, v of p is a decreasing, but the way to decrease this function is, you know, we must converge it to this global minimum point. Okay, so from this movement, we can see that the inside, the argument p of t uh, is going to head toward equilibrium price, p star. Okay, so there is a pros and cons about this Ryapunov theorem. So this Ryapunov theorem tells us even without solving this differentiation, we can tell given system is globally stable or not. So if there exists a solution to this differentiation, uh, you know, that leading to, so that heading toward stationary point, no matter what the initial state is, okay? So the answer is if we can find the Ryapunov function associated with this system, and the answer is yes. If we can't, the answer is no. Yeah, so that is a very convenient criterion for global stability. But this advantage of this uh, theorem is, you know, it is often difficult to find the Ryapunov function. Okay, and so we have to know <clears throat> for global stability of market system, uh, find the Ryapunov function. But in general equilibrium theory, it turns out that you know, we can construct a Ryapunov function like this. So the condition for global stability is this. Suppose that uh, at the stationary point, so the stationary point is given by this one, uh, z of p star is equal to zero. So there is a neither excess demand nor excess supply at that equilibrium price, okay? And then for other price factor, Linearly independent of p star, so p is a not linearly proportional to p star. Okay, so p it, p cannot be expressed as uh, expressed by some constant times, uh, you know, the equilibrium price, because <clears throat> and, and and for these price vectors, for these price vectors, we must have the dot product between equilibrium price and the excess demand function be positive. 
if P was a linear proportional, then we know by the property of excess demand function, Z of P is also equal to zero because uh, Z function is a homogeneous of degree zero, right? So Z of alpha P star is equal to Z of, Z of P star. And we already assumed that we already defined P star as the uh, <clears throat> price vector where uh, there is a neither excess demand nor excess supply. So, uh, you know, this inequality cannot be satisfied. Okay, so the condition is for every price vector, oh, sorry, <coughs> every price vector P, uh, that is a, a not linearly proportional to P star, we have a positive dot product between uh, equilibrium price vector and excess demand function. All right, so under this condition, you know, the price adjustment system described by, you know, this differential equation. So whenever there is excess demand, price goes upward, and excess supply, price goes downward, you know. This system is globally stable. So although we can find a solution to this differential equation, so we can find explicit uh, price trajectory, but nevertheless, we can tell uh, under this condition, you know, the solution to that uh, dynamic system is globally stable using Lyapunov function theorem. So Lyapunov theorem, okay? So now we are gonna find the Lyapunov function associated with this price system, this price adjustment system, okay? To show that system is in fact globally stable, okay? And then the function is given by uh, this expression. All right, so the V of P, uh, in fact, it should be just a, uh, just a P sub K, now instead of a, a function of T, okay? So suppose that V of P is given by this, okay? And we wanna demonstrate that this function is a Ryapna function for the given system. Okay, so if the price adjustment system is given by this differentiation, then we want to demonstrate that uh, this is a Ryapunov function for that. Okay, so to this end, we have to check the given function satisfies these two properties. So the first property is immediate. At the stationary point P star, V attains a global minimum. But now the V function is given by square function, right? So the only way to minimize this function is with respect to P, you know, you can easily see that when PK is given by P sub K star, so stationary point, right? And then the global minimum is equal to zero. Okay, so for other price vector P, the function takes a positive value. So it satisfies the first condition for Ryapunov Reopner function. Okay, now we have to check the second condition. Composition, so composite function between V and P must have a negative derivative with respect to T. Okay, so now we take a composition. So now we plug in P sub K of T, okay, into V function. And this P sub K is a solution to the price adjustment system. Okay, and then we take the derivative using the chain rule, okay? So now we have a, a one function inside, one function of T inside. So using the chain rule, we first take the derivative of the outer function. So power two comes out front and we take one away from the power. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside that is a dp over dt, okay? <clears throat> And because this P sub K of T is defined as a solution to this differential equation system, so DP over DT, price movement follows this differential equation, so this equation. So instead of this derivative, we can substitute constant C times excess demand function, okay? Now we examine this expression, all right? So that tells us, because first we can cancel out C, C sub K will be canceled. 
and we have two summation of p sub k times z sub k of p okay just ignoring this you know functional notation okay just suppress this notation we can write this way and minus two summation of p sub k star times uh, z sub k of p all right and then the first term the first summation is nothing but dot product between p and excess demand function and we know that this is equal to zero by Wallace law okay no matter what price dot product between price factor and excess demand at that price is equal to zero okay so we are left with this one so i forgot negative two but does not matter because you now we can tell the sign because you know by assumption p star dot z of p is a positive so you know for at any time t uh we can say this dot product has a positive value positive sign so you know <clears throat> the derivative of the composite function turns out to be negative sign it, it turns to it turns out to have negative sign okay so we just show that there is a reactional function associated with this system and uh, so this function satisfies the two conditions for being react enough so uh, you know we can say uh, the given system is globally stable okay so that is a one way to so the what the one way to show that without solving the differentiation the given economic system dynamic system is globally stable or not okay uh, using react enough functions theory <clears throat> all right and lastly you know if we think about the condition uh in the proposition 3.3 you know that is just the definition of equilibrium price okay so this regarding uh the first part the first condition if we think about the second condition p star dot z of p must be positive for every p or uh, linearly independent of p star okay then comparing with the previous conditions for uniqueness uh gs property and the weak axiom of little preference then we can see that you know either if either condition is satisfied you know the condition for global stable or uh, globally globally global stability is also satisfied okay let me just show that you know if work holds then this condition is satisfied that is a, just a piece of cake because you know warp requires that if we have this inequality so this inequality implies that this inequality right so because we have it so we assume so we define p star as an equilibrium price factor so this this is going to be zero okay so the dot product is also zero and we have you know on the left hand side on the left hand side we also have zero because this is by uh, Wallace law. Okay, so the first inequality is automatically satisfied. Okay, already satisfied. So we must have this for every p where z of p is not equal to z of p star. Okay, that was the uh, definition of work. If we go back to <clears throat> definition. So whenever z of p is different from z of p prime, the inequality implies this inequality, right? So we have this one. Mm -hmm. We have this one. So that means, you know, p is not linearly proportional to p star, okay? So the work requires that, you know, whenever p is, not, uh, is linearly independent of p star, we have this inequality. But by Wallace law again, we know this is equal to zero. Okay? So we obtain this inequality. And let me leave that exercise. So let me leave for exercise, you know, to show that, you know, GS property also leads us to 
uh, this condition. So GS property implies uh, this inequality for every P linearly independent P star. Okay, so summarizing, you know, these two conditions, right? If either GS property or warp holds, we know that so equilibrium always always exists, right? Just by two assumptions on preference relations. But we maintain an assumption, you know, throughout the analysis. So if the uh, preference relation is strictly monotone, a strongly monotone and strictly convex, we know that Wallachian equilibrium exists. Okay, so Wallachian equilibrium exists in a broad in a broad class of models. Okay, so don't worry about the existence. And if the GS property is satisfied, we know that that Wallachian equilibrium is a unique. Okay. Furthermore, because GS property leads us to this inequality, so the condition for stability. So if GS property is satisfied or the warp is satisfied, we know that no matter where the uh, where we start, so no matter where the initial market price is formed, you know, in the end, that price will converge to uh, will converge to the unique equilibrium price. Okay, so that is kind of you know the key essence of general equilibrium analysis. Okay, so under either condition, there exists a unique Wallachian equilibrium. And then if the price system satisfies, so if the price system responds to uh, responds to excess demand function. So whenever there is an excess demand, price moves upward. Whenever there is an excess supply, price moves downward. So the price adjustment follows this kind of, you know, this kind of a, uh, uh, so follows the, uh, the sign of the excess demand function. Then we know that, uh, you know, no matter where the initial price is, the market system leads us to the unique equilibrium price. So the uh, market price converges to the unique equilibrium price, right? So that is kind of, you know, the summary of chapter 17. And that shows us, you know, how powerful, you know, the general equilibrium prediction is, right? Hope you guys, hope you guys find this video useful. And then uh, I will see you guys in the next video.